to the central. And uh, most of you know that we just come back yesterday from Rotorua and uh, we had a great uh, men's conference, uh, this our annual men's conference. And it was well attended. There was over a hundred, I think it was 102 men that was there. And uh, it, was, it was a great time. Actually, the feedback that we got was that it was, this is the greatest men's retreat we ever had in the last 30 something years that they have been having this men's retreat. So it's been a great, uh, great uh, uh, sort of fellowship we had together. Uh, was well attended over, uh, there was eight churches all together actually, all the way from Wellington, uh, from Kapiti, you know, and then all the way to Auckland here. So uh, it was this awesome service we had yesterday and the day before. Pastor Martin preached on the first uh, session, which is on a Friday night. The topic was on man's greatest enemies, or man's worst enemies, sorry, man's worst enemies. And the two topics we talked about, the first one was idolatry, talking about idols. Idolatry, and the second one was adultery. And uh, when you think about adultery, you're immediately thinking about physical thing, isn't it? But it's adultery in regards of committing adultery against God when you have other gods in your life. And man, I tell you, after the service, first time when we started out that second session, when I preached in there, I asked him, I said, How many of you have committed adultery? And nobody raised their hand. But after the service, after the preaching of the word, I have a few men that came and said, you know what, Pastor, I couldn't raise my first hand because I thought it was talking about physical adultery. But then after the preaching of the word, I can tell you, I have committed adultery against God. And man, I tell you, there was a great revival after that. As a result, in our fellowship time at the third session, we have gathered together and, and the Holy Spirit just moved so mightily that man's heart has been drawn closer. And then just uh, for us, it's out of the blue. But uh, Isaac made a, uh, you know, he spoke up and he said, like, you know, God has compelled him, pointing to know the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And so praise the Lord for that, at church. Yeah? I mean, it's exciting, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't expected that to happen, but uh, God only moved in his heart and wanted, uh, drawing him to come to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So praise the Lord for that. And so uh, looking forward and... Uh, Today we're going to have a special treat for you. Uh, we have Eddie Laval, who is uh, one of the deacons, but also is a man, a, a faithful man, servant of the Lord, is humble man, and uh, I know that he doesn't like to be in front of people. Uh, he always told me that he doesn't like to be in front of people. But I told him, I said, like being a Christian, God always put us in front of people anyway. <laughs> so, but he is, he is a faithful man. He's teaching one of our classes, and then also he. He teaches in, in the children's class, so uh, praise the Lord for him and for Isabella, a uh, godly wife that he has as well, and uh, God bless him with a family and a brand new baby that Grammy around there is very proud of. All right. So anyway, without further ado, let's uh, let's give uh, any one welcome to preach the continuing series on what things God can do. Yeah. 
And, and, and that's the power of God's Word. The power of God's Word does things to us that is beyond our comprehension. It is beyond our finite minds. But this morning I've been assigned this task to talk about the omnipotence of God. The omnipotence of God. The character of God is He is all powerful. God is all powerful. And I know it's a very good topic. It can be very general. You can truly say it wasn't the easiest of topics to prepare. But I praise God for His faithfulness that we can hear Him speak and that He would speak to you today. You see, I'm not God. I'm just merely a mouthpiece to deliver His Word. You know, as Pastor mentioned uh, many a times, I, I don't really like the, the forefront of ministry. But somehow, for some reason, God places people there. And the more I try to run away from it, I try to do the journal ones and look for a taxi and start looking for them, mate. God drags me by the shrug of his shoulder, I shrug on my shoulders and he brings me back. Amen. Right. You know, sometimes God does that to me, and He does that a lot of times. He really needs to yeah. pull my heart a couple of my knees down and really depend on Him, because that's what it's about. Yeah. Amen. And I'm none of this what I do here today, or any of the pastors. I take my hat off to Pastor Bill, Pastor Marty. You think, you think of the hours and countless time that they invest in studying faithfully God's Word and bringing it day after day throughout the week before the church to feed and nourish your spiritual soul because we need it yes. and I'll tell you this they need all the prayer that we can give to him Amen. and I want to say for you guys I need you to pray for me because as I deliver this word because mm. uh, I'm really shaking in my shoes at the moment <laughs> <laughs> but hey let's go to the Lord and let's pray to him first Amen. and let's ask for him to intervene at this time just pray. Father, we just thank you once again. We're just so thankful for your word. Oh Lord, your word is truth. Your word is power. Yes. And Father, this morning, I pray for the listening ears, mm. that they would hear your voice. Yeah. And Lord, that you would touch them in such a special way. Father, I ask that you remove me. Remove me from here. And that people may see you. I am with them. So, Father, I ask you go before me. And that you will do the mighty things that you have always done from ages before me. For it's in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. To seal this prayer and all God's good news. Amen. Amen. I just want to touch on the word power for a moment. I know the theme or the topic that I'm going to speak on is God cannot fail. But I just want to touch on the word power for a moment. God is all powerful. He is able to do anything. Do you agree with me, church? Amen. He is all powerful. However, God cannot do that which is contrary to His character or nature. He is holy, the Bible says. There is none like God. He is set apart from sin. And when we have the right view of who God is, we have the right view of who man is before Him. Now James says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Amen, church? That's right. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and nor does he tempt anyone. 
Yeah. You know, a lot of the times when we we think about it, every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Yeah. You know, we, we men, we often think that strength or power is often the pure physical terms. Yeah. We often think that way. Yeah. We often think that as Christians, we can be smarter than God. We think we can outsmart them. We think we know better. And that's the power of the mind. Yeah. Right. And you always hear people say sometimes we just need to think outside of the box. Mm. Although it may be true in some sense, but when we are doing that against God's will that's contrary to His purposes mm. to get what we want we're sitting on the throne right. and you see pride is something that we all struggle with you agree with me church <laughs> pride is something that all of us here struggle with we love the taste of its power but I can tell you this, it is very deceitful. <laughs> yeah. We see it every day in our schools, our workplaces, in public, <coughs> and unfortunately, in our local churches. Mm. And we can be manipulative at times. Yeah. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, The heart is deceitful above oh. all things, yeah. and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Sometimes you think of your children, parents. Sometimes they can outwit us or outsmart us sometimes. Yeah? You ever had that experience? Right. And when they try and do that to get what they want, a lot of us like to give us give them those types of lies. Have you ever seen those lies? <laughs> you know, uh, I don't want to put my sister on the spot, but <laughs> when my nephew does something to try and outsmart her, my sister does the classic eyes. <laughs> she does these eyes. <laughs> you know, have you seen those eyes like that? <laughs> Some of us have eyes like that already, so. For some of these who are Maori, they probably do those, those eyes that bulge out to them. You better fill it up up there and... <laughs> but I tell you, there's nothing beats the way how the islanders do it. <laughs> because when the islanders do it, they go this way, they go... <laughs> Uh, well, what happened to your turtle? 
And then the man said, let me make fun of my turtle. <laughs> it's the fastest turtle you'll ever see, man. <laughs> and then the waiter goes, yeah, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> so the owner of the turtle, he looks to the left of the room and he sees this dog and he goes to the waiter. Is that your dog, man? And the waiter says, yeah, that's, that's my dog. <laughs> he goes, the owner of the turtle says, I'll bet you $10 my turtle can beat your dog at a rest. <laughs> So the uh, waiter says, yeah, okay, I'll bet you a hundred dollars that he can't beat my uh, dog in a race. <laughs> so the, the waiter, or the owner of the table says, yep, I'll take up the bet. So he puts the, the dog down next to the turtle. It says, only bucks. Get set, go. <laughs> so the dog starts running. And the owner of the turtle picks up the turtle and he throws it. <laughs> And he tells the, he tells the waiter, I told you my turtle was fast. That was the worst story you could ever tell. I bet you the owner was from Zimbabwe. <laughs> 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 you see, uh, there's a lesson to be learned. This is what happens here when you try to make up stories. You have to prepare for your sermon. You have to try to write along. But I've never got this past. But when you think of it that way, when you think of this, that's how it is there at times. Bernard mm -hmm. B. Beavers had this to say. In seminary mission class, I want you guys to listen carefully to this. Herbert Jackson told how, as a new missionary, he assigned a car that would not start without a push. Mm. After pondering his problem, he devised a plan. He went to school near his home, he got permission to take some children out of class, and had them push his car off. As he made his rounds, he would either park on a hill or leave the engine running. He used this ingenious procedure for two years. Ill health forced the Jackson family to leave, and a new missionary came to that station. When Jackson proudly began to explain his arrangement for getting the car started, the new man began looking under the hood. And before the explanation was complete, the new missionary interrupted. He said, why? Dr. Jackson, I believe the only trouble is this loose cable. He gave the cable a twist, he stepped into the car, pushed the switch, and to Jackson's astonishment, the engine roared to life. Mm. For two years, needless trouble had become routine. Mm. The power was there all the time. Yeah. Only a loose connection kept Jackson from putting that power to work. You know, as funny as it might seem when we listen to these stories, how true it is in times of our own walk with God. Power trusted in the wrong hands, like the man that threw the two, can cause some serious damage or hurt. And sometimes a loose connection from the greatest source of power, God, can often lead to a life of needless routine. Right. And if you're not careful, sin against God. Yeah. To live the, the Christian life without that power and to walk in our own strength. I want you to listen to me, church. It would always fail. Yeah, right. It would always fail. Mm. You may have plans and purposes, and there's nothing wrong with that. But those plans and purposes are not formed to the higher purposes of who God is, 
will always fail. Yeah. You see, God cannot fail. Yes, church. Amen. God cannot fail. Yes. And in this book, titled The Attributes of God, A.W. Tosa had this to say. Mm. And if you ever get a chance to read this book, The Attributes of God, I, I really do encourage that you read it. Yes. And this is what he has to say. He says you found out on a cold morning sometimes. When you go out to the car, you turn the key and there's a discouraged moan. The car's not starting. But the thing won't turn over. You've trusted your battery and your battery has failed. It's used up its power. It has given it away so little by little it has become less than it was before. Listen to this, church. But when God gives power to the angels, archangels, redeemed men, mountains, seas, stars, and planets, He doesn't relinquish anything. And the witness, He says this He does not become less than He was before. Because right. God's batteries do not run out. Amen. Wow. Yes. He does not become less than he was before. Such a powerful statement from a man was inspired by the power of the Spirit of God. Colossians 1, 16, 17 says this. And this is the Apostle Paul to the church at Colossians. He says this. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, archangels, powers, whether they are thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. Amen. By Him and for Him. Verse 17 says, He is before all things. And in Him, all things hold together. Right. It doesn't take much for us to look outside and see creation. It doesn't take much for us to look at the skies, look at the sun, and see the eternal power of God's hands. Yeah. And your mind cannot fathom that how that all holds together. How does God sustain that? We live in a world where people like to build, they like to create, they like to set or make empires, and they like to keep themselves happy without God. And I wish sometimes God will come down and speak to them like how He spoke to Job. Yeah. Where were you when I laid the foundations of this earth? You know, sometimes the world needs a bit of humble pie. And I, I think of this word power, and when I think of God, that's it. It's beyond your mind and my mind. And I want to take you to the book of Isaiah. Because Isaiah is the passage where uh, I want us to Look at this morning, yeah. Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 11. But if you do have your Bibles, uh, if we can go straight to Isaiah 6, I want us to see, and I want you guys to picture this. I want you guys to put yourself in Isaiah's shoes. And I want you to create that image in your head. If you're there, Amy. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 6. The verse is wonderful. Sorry, verses uh, 1 to one to 5. Okay. And this is what it says. In the year that King Uzziah died, this is Isaiah. 
He said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. He said, above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Can you imagine what Isaiah is seeing? In the presence of the Almighty God. Isaiah saw this. And it says in verse 4, And the posts of the door were shaken by his voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. And so I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Overwhelmed by the presence of the Almighty, Isaiah saw a true view of himself. <clears throat> such power, such glory, and it's something that I cannot fathom. But this is what he saw. And from this passage that I want to preach to you this morning, Isaiah chapter 55, I want us to understand the backdrop of why we're here at this point. Isaiah 55, if you can go there this morning, church. Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 11. And just a, a bit of a, a background, this is the prophet Isaiah who, who prophesied during the, uh, the divided kingdom. Uh, that's uh, Judah. Judah was uh, southern Judah, so the majority of his message was directed at the southern kingdom of Judah. So during um, Isaiah's own lifetime, the, the threat was Assyria, and the prophet had to, sport, uh, had to speak forcefully to their kings because they tended to trust on their own political and military power rather than the power of God. And this is the settings from chapters 1 to 39. In chapters 40 to uh, 66, it shows that Judah's God is superior to other nations that would come and he promises to, uh, to deliver his chosen people. In Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. We'll come back to uh, Isaiah 55. If you have your Bible, read along as I read with you. And I want you guys to picture this. Why we've come to this point of this passage. You guys are listening? Yeah. Verse 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Did you hear that, church? Yeah. Heaven and earth, they are summoned to God's courtroom as witnesses to God's covenant people. Moses in Deuteronomy 4, chapter 20, uh, verses 25 and 26. Moses says this, he says, Heaven and earth will be watching for the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He is a jealous God. When you produce children and grandchildren, and you have remained a long time in the land, 
and you corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or likeness of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. The faithfulness of God's creation has been summoned to his courtroom. You look at creation, the obedience of creation, the sun comes out when it's supposed to come. How it all works. And God's faithfulness of his creation has been summoned into his courtroom. He says, I have called heaven and earth to witness against you today, that you will surely and suddenly perish from off the land that you are going across the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days on it, but shall be completely destroyed. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the, whole, the anger of the Holy One of Israel, they have turned away backward. And this was the case with God's people. They had forgotten the one true powerful God, Yahweh. The one who is sovereign. The one who sits on the throne. The one who is to be high and lifted up. The Holy One of Israel forsaken by His own special people. Let me ask you this question. I've never experienced it. But if you can imagine that you've raised your child and you've brought them up and you've nourished them, you've taken care of their needs, and you've loved them to the ends of the earth despite the good and the lows, and it comes to the point where they turn around and disown you, I don't know how that feels, but I know that there are many people they would have that type of feeling. Mm. Grieved, sorrowful, angry. Can you imagine the hurt, the betrayal that God is feeling at this time? His own people. His own people whom He loved with a special love. You know, we too, we, we can be real quick to point the finger at God's people for their disobedience to Him. But you know what, church? We too can grieve God. When we get busy with what's going on around us, we sometimes think about ourselves, uh, me, my, and uh, me, my, Irene, or whoever it is. We have this poor me attitude. I'm not feeling right, right now. You know, I said that the pastor earlier this morning wasn't feeling right when he was worshipping the Lord. Because he was sick all night last night. I'm not trying to put the pastor on the pedestal. First of all, our feelings should not be above God's Word. Right. It should always align with His Word. Right. But if we choose our feelings over what God says, you notice how quickly we forget the things of God, just like Israel. Right. We neglect Bible studies. I'm too tired. There's not enough time in the day. I'm too busy. We neglect fellowship with the saints. We neglect the ministry in the homes to our children. And soon enough, if you're not careful, we disown the things of God. God and His love and His mercy is something that I cannot fathom. To a nation that has walked away from Him, you instantly think 
that God should just wipe them out. That they should be done away with. But that is not the God whom we serve. And you see that the great compassion that God has for His people. He has a plan. He has a purpose for His people. Don't forget, Israel to this day are still God's special people. He still has a purpose and a plan for them. And this is it. God cannot fail. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 to 11. I think it's on the screen here. I'll finish on it. Always trust the Lord. <laughs> Brother John. This is Isaiah. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not there, but waters the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper into the thing where I sent it to. Amen. So the first point I want to make is that God cannot fail because His thoughts and His ways are immeasurable. Amen. Uh, I don't know if I feel so. I have. We can trust what the time. Immeasurable. God cannot fail because His thoughts and His ways are immeasurable. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. You know the Hebrew word for thoughts means plans or purpose. And the Hebrew word for ways means road or direction or course of action. And we could say that God's plans or purposes are not like our plans or purposes. Right. And the way and the direction and the manner by which God approaches it, okay, that is beyond our imagination, our finite minds, and runs against the grain of our thinking. And this is what the passage is talking about. God is sending an invitation for all people to come to God to find forgiveness. And this is how vast and how high it is that you cannot measure God's forgiveness. You can't measure that. Matthew 18, 25 I just want to I just want to highlight something here. I want to show you how high how big and how vast is God's forgiveness? Mm. So if you have a moment, can we turn to Matthew chapter 18? Matthew chapter 18, verses 22 to 35. If you guys are there, say amen. Mm. And this is Peter, verse 21. Then Peter came to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Then he explains this parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out 
and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their, mis uh, their master all that he had done. Then his master, after he had called them, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. I want to point out something here. The vastness of God's forgiveness. And there's something here I want you to really focus on, church. Here is a slave or a servant he owes his master 10,000 talents. Mm. Now that's equivalent, if you work it out, one denarius, I want you guys to count this, one denarius was a usual day's wage for a worker. So if you work six days a week, how many denarius would you receive? Six. six. I'm glad you guys can count. It's 52 weeks in a year. You times that by six. I don't know, is anyone got it? 312. Thank you. 312 denarii. It would take you closely to 19 to 20 years to make 6,000 denarii. That's one talent. 20 years. I hope I don't live that long. <laughs> 20 years. One talent equals 6,000 denarius. 20 years to make one talent. So how long would it take for the owner to repay his debt back to his master? I worked it all out in 200,000 years. 200,000 years. <laughs> 200,000 years, that's like several billion dollars. Man, I, I don't have that in my bank account, maybe dollars. <laughs> several billion dollars. And the master, filled with compassion, forgave them all that debt. You think that IRD, when they chase you up for a mil 11 million dollars, they're going to say, no, that's all right, so you're all <laughs> is it not here? No, but, uh, I don't think so. But you see the point that I'm making? You see how big God's forgiveness is? Yes. You see how wide that is? Yeah. You see how you're wide? We can't, I can't fathom that. Mm. See, the point I'm actually trying to make is that God's forgiveness knows no boundaries. Right. He knows no boundaries. Aren't you glad that? We have a God who is merciful. Amen. We have a God who is so loving. And that you and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Him. Yeah. Let's not forget that, church. Right. Psalms 103 verse 11 says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. You see, God is long-suffering. He suffers long. You know, for us, I don't know, when someone offends you, or does something that gets on your ego, you may forgive that person the first time. 
And then the second time, it'll probably take about another two weeks to see how that works off. And then he continues to do it, and then you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, I'll see you after church. <laughs> and you start to get impatient. But God here is telling Peter, that's not so with us as believers. Right. You can't keep a record of grudges of people who have offended us, church. Because you know why? Because it's going to distort our thinking. It's going to distort our thinking. Yeah. First Corinthians 13, 5, talking about love. I've got the NLT version, and it says this, It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And here it is. It keeps no record of being wrong. You know, Christians, we cannot count the number of times we forgive. Rather, we forgive because God has forgiven much. You see how high that is, church? You see the love that God has, His compassion for His people, the nation of Israel? The second point I want to make is that God cannot fail because His word goes forth from His mouth and does the impossible. He does the impossible. Verses 10 and 11 says this, For as the rain comes down, and snow from heaven, and do not return but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and shall prosper in the thing for which I said it. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, you see that in creation, what is the earth? It gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And God is here trying to make a contrast. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Yeah. I want to just talk about a little story. It takes me years back. But I'll tell you this, I'll, I'll never forget that moment. It was a divine day and an appointed time, and it was me and Pastor Irwin. We had a divine appointment with my brother, Potter. Now, if he's got a testimony to tell, he can tell you that. God made that divine appointment. We went and Mary, we met with him, and we shared the love of God to him. And when we left that place, we all was so excited. I mean, he had only met the guy at just that time. And Earl was jumping for joy in the car, and he goes, any man, praise the Lord, we've shared the word of God to, this, to Boto, to Michael, oh, we've just got to pray that God will do the work in him. And I just turned to the pastor and I said, yeah, good stuff, pastor, I don't think we're going to see that guy again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I actually said to pastor Hill. You see the unbelief? <laughs> Every opportunity that pastor made to share the word that gives life, he believed in it. And I said, oh, we'll probably see him going, yeah, I'm not forget about it. That was bad, actually. And to my surprise, he came the very next Sunday. Mm. 
And I was like, what was it? <laughs> but you see, God had taken a hold of what was up. Yeah. And just as the rain and the snow came down from heaven and rained upon his heart, God was at work. Amen. He went before me and pastor and yeah. was doing the work in his heart. Amen. Jesus came down from heaven and he planted a seed in God and put his heart. Mm. And he gave him bread to eat. Yeah. And he says, this is the bread of life. Mm. Yeah. And God turned his heart, churned it down, twisted it, and brought him to his knees because he recognized that he was a sinner before the holy and righteous God. Yeah. He understood that his sin offended God. Yeah. He understood that he was in need of God. Mm. Yeah. The psalmist, uh, Isaiah 45, 23 says this. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth. In righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. Mm. I tell you what, God cut Otto down to his knees that day. Yeah. Yeah. And you will probably have the same impact. You'll probably experience that with God. Yeah. You may be here this morning, it's your first time. I'm going to tell you this, God has made a divine appointment with you. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. You weren't here by accident. God wanted to speak to you here this morning. You see, A.W. Tozer says this, God desires to reveal to us that His capacity to forgive is bigger than our capacity to sin. There is no sin that is great enough that God without fail cannot forgive. Amen. You see, you've got to have a, a, a true view of who you are before God. The Bible says there is none righteous. No, not one. Your sin has offended God. Mm. You may say to yourself, well, uh, yeah, I'm not good enough. Well, I'll tell you this, God doesn't forgive good people. You need to come to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it is Christ who paid the penalty of sin and He took that penalty upon Himself and He bore all of that. So, so that you may be forgiven. You see, that's God's plans and purposes. And it's been God's plan and purposes from the very day one. It's always been. It's never changed. It is the same word. It is the same gospel. It is the same God who never changes. Today, yesterday, forever. He is the same God that will do that impossible work in your heart. Yeah. Amen. That is who God is. But you see, you've got to come to God and confess your sin. Yeah. That you've offended Him. You've, you've violated His holiness. Mm. And it is only by faith that you accept the righteousness of God, that God will clothe you with the righteousness robe of His Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Is that you there this morning? You know, interestingly enough, the word Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. The Lord is salvation. Isaiah has talked about the, the prophecy there in 53, the suffering servant who's going to be bruised, wounded for our transgressions. But at the very beginning of that chapter in uh, Isaiah 55, he says this. He says, Ho, 
Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant to you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you, surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know shall run to you, because the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Verse 6 is where I want Seek the Lord while he may be found. You need to seek the Lord while he may be found. And you know what? Today is the day of your salvation if that's you, if you're that person here this morning. Because there's going to come a time where he's not going to be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The Bible says in Romans 4, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be yet saved. Saved. Just as I said before, to come before the presence of God, the person, let the wicked forsake his way. Forsake his way. And the un unrighteous man, his thoughts, or his plans, or his purposes. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. See how big God is. There's no sin that is great for God that He cannot forgive the church family. Yeah. And if you're a person here this morning, I pray that God will have a special meeting with you today. Amen, church. So for this moment, I just want us to bow our heads and our eyes closed. And I just want to invite us to go on. Lord, we heard a message this morning that God cannot fail. That the Word of God never returned void. He never failed. He is God. I wonder this morning as we're meditating about what we just heard, I wonder if there's anyone here today that has said, I have failed many times in my life. I have failed. Actually, maybe perhaps some of you are saying like, you know what? I feel like I'm living in failure. I feel I'm failing. Let me just tell you this. That if you fail, that is good news. Because now that you can come to the God that never fails. You need to get yourself plugged in, just like what the illustration we talked about earlier. That that cable needs to be connected to the power. The power of God is available. The Word of God is with us. All you have to do is get plugged into the Word of God. But here this morning, you're here, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you this, you do not have power in your life. And the only way you can experience that power in your life is that you have to be plugged in to the God who has who has never failed. The God of all powerful God. So if you're here this morning, you heard what Eddie mentioned this morning that uh, God's mercy never fails. His grace is always abundant. And if you're here this morning, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not plugged into the true living God. I want to invite you. Come. Put your faith and trust in Him. Get your life plugged in to the, the Word of God. Get your life plugged in 
to the God who created you. Listen to the word God says this, have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator to the ends of the earth, never faints nor weary. It's understanding, it's unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have not might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why don't we just pray together this morning. Those of you who know the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe there's something in your life right now that hinders you to get plugged into that power. Why don't you pray to God say, God, forgive me for my sin. My sin has hindered me from getting plugged into that power of you. I have not been faithful to the word of God. I have not been faithful in depending on God because I have not been faithful to God's word. Why don't you repent this morning? And if you're here this morning, you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. I want to bring you to the throne of grace. Pray that God, by His divine power, to give you understanding, to know what does it mean to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Is there anyone like that this morning? Say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. I know of Him, but I do not know Him personally. Would you please pray for me that I may know him personally as my personal Savior and Lord. Anyone like that this morning, put your hands up and put it down. Amen. Amen. God, see that hand. God, see your heart, brother. Anyone else? Amen. God, see that heart, too. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Christians, why don't you pray together with me? Father God in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we understand this morning that you never fail. That you are the all-powerful God. And your word is you, Lord. And your word never fails. And Father God, we praise you in Jesus Christ our Lord. Because then, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of what he has done on the cross, that we have been connected to the power of God. To your word by your spirit. Father God, I pray that for your people this morning who has a personal, personal relationship with you already, I pray that they will continue to be plugged into your word, to that power, for them to live in your power, God, not according to their abilities, not according to their talents, not according to their power, but God, to your power alone, for them to learn to wait upon God who never fails. So they will walk and not grow weary, and they run but not faint. Lord God, I pray, I praise you this morning for those who raise their hands and their hearts to you. Lord God, they have testified to you, and you know their heart. They do they want to know you. They want to know the God of all powerful God. And these individuals they raise their hands, they have lifted up their hearts, desiring to know you as their Lord and Savior. God, I pray. May you just pour out your spirit upon them for them to give an understanding, to know your word, to know your power, the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For them to die to their sin and to be born again in Jesus Christ. Lord God, I pray may you seal their hearts by your spirit. Give them understanding in their mind and God, I pray that they will surrender their life to you to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and their personal Lord. Thank you once again for this morning. Thank you for using A to deliver your word. And truly, God, that your word is powerful and will never return to you. For in Jesus Christ's name, we pray all these things. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, A, for your word this morning. Praise the Lord for that. Listen, for those of you who raise your hand, your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to know Him, come see me after the service. I'll be up in the front, but I can come to you. If you have any questions, you know, if you have anything in your mind that you want to think about, please feel free to ask, okay? And I always want to give you an answer from the Word of God, not my wisdom, from God's Word. Amen? Because I want you to get plugged in.
to the true power. No, some kind of fake imitation, you know? So know the power of uh, the truth of God. Praise the Lord for that. Next week, we're going to finish up this series on the message, Things God Cannot Do. So we have seen so far that God cannot, what, the first one? God cannot sin because He is holy. What's the second one, remember? God cannot change because He is unchangeable. What's the third one? God cannot lie because He is the truth. He is the truth. And today we learn that God cannot fail. Why is it? Because He is all-powerful. And next we're going to look at it, that God cannot absent. A lot of people think that sometimes God is detaching Himself from us. Or you feel that you're alone. Find out next week about our God of His all-presence. In your life, it's not going to be the same. When you hear that. Amen? All right, praise the Lord for the Word of God today, and I pray that all you brothers and sisters in Christ, you will fill up with the Word of God, and your brim, and may your, the water of God is just up to the brim and overflowing, all right? And share it with others as well this week. Um, again, we praise the Lord uh, of these, these people that raised their hands to the Lord. We praise the Lord that, uh, church, I want you to pray for Isaac, as he desires to know the Lord Jesus Christ yesterday, and today I pray that you guys, church, we need to pray for him because the devil, Satan, is not going to let him alone. You understand that, all right? Tomorrow he's going to be in school and there will be so many unbelievers, many of those things that are not of God. You need to pray for him. If you don't know his number, get his phone number, text him, remind him that God is with him. How about that, okay? Praise the Lord for a good godly animal that he is, Otto and Akanti as well. So they can also be in touch with them. But all the cousins, cousins, remind them, okay? <laughs> Don't forget that. And also, uh, this week, you know, I know that uh, Steve well, my just said, well, I mentioned it, Mylene, she came to, uh, uh, on Wednesday, she took two buses and a train, <laughs> and a train and the two buses, came all the way from the city to the office, and she said, I have only one question, and that question is how can I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? After being with us for about a year, I believe, and uh, the preachings of the Word of God and the teaching of the Word uh, gave her an understanding, and the Holy Spirit compelled her to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So she did come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I have the privilege, Isabella, to pray for her at the office. So uh, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Man, I tell you, uh, because they're so quiet. You know? Amen. <laughs> and they point to Mount. Oh, man. Come on, you know. The Bible says the heaven shouts when one soul is saved. Amen. I guess we're not in heaven yet, are we? <laughs> we're too Baptists, you know that? <laughs> all right, so praise the Lord for all this soul. So pray for them if you would. Okay, and then also continue to pray see more people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your friends, families, and all that, all right? And don't forget to pray for our missionaries who are uh, far from us, but that they're close to our hearts. You know, don't forget our missionary of the week, all the scores. They're in Vanuatu. Uh, the great things happening in Vanuatu, guys. We really still want to take that plan, uh, that trip this year, to go to uh, next year, sorry, in 2020, to go to Vanuatu. So to pray for about this, uh, pray that uh, you know things are uh, ready for for us to go there, because uh, you know if God is not ready yet for us to go, we don't want to go yet. All right, but we want to be a blessing to the spores and to the rehearsals and to the work they're doing in there. That church is growing, and not just in number, but you know, salvations and the Lord and all of that. So looking forward to be able to spend time with them. Do pray for them if you would please. I want to invite Sajid Dove, if you would come here, lead us in worship.